Hi, I'm Eric Grant with Say Right. In today's tutorial video, we're going to be showing you how to make these tote bags. These tote bags are available in a kit form, and you can find a link in the description below which will direct you to the patterns and colors that you can choose from. It's also available as a pattern that you can buy separately from the kit, so you can pick your own decorative fabric if you'd like as well. Now let's get started and show you how to make your very own tote bag with a recessed zipper. In this first chapter, we're going to be discussing our pattern and cutting our fabric. Here's our pattern. And pattern number one through seven is the decorative fabric. Patterns eight through 11 is the lining fabric. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and separate uh, because on this line is uh, where the lining fabric uh, is separate from the decorative fabric. So we're going to just cut these two patterns apart on this line. That's the first step. So we're going to put pattern 8, 9, 10, and 11 aside for now. This is the uh, lining fabric and we're going to concentrate on the decorative fabric pattern which is 1 through uh, 7. So this is the tote bag in a uh, particular pattern. And you can see this pattern looks good this way and it actually wraps around to the bottom side and look and it also looks good this way there's no uh, stems or there's no anchors or there's nothing that says that this pattern would be upside down and this pattern would be right side up so in this scenario this is the main body which is this whole piece that wraps around it, it goes from the top wraps around the bottom and comes back the other side so in the, in the scenario of a bag like that, you would leave this whole body section, which is pattern number one, intact. However, if you have a bag that has a distinctive pattern, which we'll show here, that has a, a top side, you would never want the top side to come down and wrap around to the back side because as soon as you hit the middle, which is right here, the, uh, this would be, the top would be upside down on this side. Let me show you. So here's a pattern that you could have problems with. In fact, you can see this right away. So we have anchors, and the anchors are up here. And then when we get to the middle, the anchors go down. So let, let's look at this. When I finish this bag, it's not finished, but it's an example so you can see. See the anchors are up here, and it, the fabric comes around. Look at the back side. The anchors go down here. That's a problem. And so if you have a fabric that's directional like this, then you want to treat this pattern a little bit differently. These hash marks here indicate a uh, possible cut. If your pattern doesn't matter, you wouldn't cut it. But if your pattern matters, matters has a directional sling, you need to cut and separate this main body panel. Okay, since we're making this with a directional fabric, we're going to be doing the uh, C anchors. We're going to actually strike a line from hash mark to hash mark on pattern number one with a uh, Sharpie marker. If you didn't have a directional fabric, you would skip that. Okay, so now we have a directional fabric, which means I have to cut this one out and separate it from this one. If I didn't have a directional fabric, I would leave it all intact and I'd glue it to my fabric and then I'd cut out everything. But because of this, I'm going to cut pattern one out. Let's just start here at the middle so you can see it. So I'm going to cut on that line that we struck. And then I'm going to cut on the outside lines. Now don't cut on these. These are made for uh, the straps. This is the center of the pattern if you, in case you want that. Those are hash marks. Don't cut those. So here it is cut out. This one's cut out perfectly. These are still all intact and so forth. So now we can glue this to our fabric. So I have my fabric laid out and I want to turn these patterns upside down because I, I like to use a spray glue so the numbers are facing uh, the tabletop. They're upside down basically. And you don't have to use a spray glue, you know, if you don't like uh, fumes or anything or overspray because sometimes you can get some overspray on stuff. I recommend doing it in the garage so you don't get overspray in your house. You can use pins if you don't want to use glue. I'm going to be using Super 88 adhesive. Uh, 3M77 uh, also works as well. We stock both. This is less expensive. Uh, I don't want to coat it drastically, and I only want to coat basically where the pattern is. It doesn't have to be coated everywhere. 
so you have a little bit of working time. You don't want the glue to be wet when you put this down, but uh, we're gonna move that one aside. We wanna try to get it on here straight because we do have anchors on this that definitely has some sort of a pattern to it. I have plenty of material. So I'm gonna try to line it up with the anchors and I'll show you what we do with that one over there. Having a second helper, especially when you have to line it up with a specific pattern can be helpful. So I'm gonna get a second helper to do this real quick. Okay, so we've got this one on so it's fairly straight and it's smoothed out nicely. There are no, hardly any wrinkles at all. This one's still a little bit tacky. It's almost to the point where it's dried out too much. Now, remember, it was cut like this from this half. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to flip this, okay? So I'm going to flip it around so that instead of being attached here, it's over here. And I do want to leave a gap because I need to add a half inch here and a half inch here so we can sew them together. So now that it's flipped around, I'll need to add a half inch to this panel at the bottom edge right here, and I'll need to add a half inch to this panel. But I also want it directly across from each other so the pattern basically is the same. So if I line it up here with this little um, rectangle, and it'll be directly across from this one, and yet it'll be flipped so the anchors will be up on the bag on the back side. An alternative to gluing, as we talked about before, is to use multi-use pins and just pin the pattern material maybe at a few corner uh, positions. Okay, we're gonna add a half inch. Here's our cutout here and a cutout here. We're, this is, would not be necessary unless you had a directional fabric like we're using. So I'm gonna use a clear acrylic ruler. I'm gonna place it on the uh, half inch or the edge of that pattern material. And I'm gonna use a chalk pencil here just to go across. And we have to add the half inch over here as well. So I'm gonna put it uh, here on that edge that we cut and strike the line. Why do I do this now? Well, because I don't wanna actually cut it out and not have that calculated into the equation. So I'm gonna start by cutting on that, hat, on that uh, chalk line. I'm gonna cut out both chalk lines first because again, I don't want to forget. Now you can use a hot knife for this as, as well if it's a synthetic fabric, which will keep the fabric from unraveling. But most of the edges are going to be concealed in the bag. All of them are. So uh, as long as it doesn't unravel much, it's not a big deal. Now we're going to cut right through the pattern material and uh, cut out the fabric at the same time because we glued it down or you may have pinned it down. So we're going to cut all these out and again, we're not gonna cut on these little hash marks or anything like that. We're gonna cut each one of these out and we'll show you what it looks like when we're done. In this chapter, we'll be sewing our decorative body together. This is only required if you have a directional fabric. Okay, so this is the cutout for a directional fabric. Had it not been a directional fabric, these, this main body panel would have been one piece without the half inch seam allowance here. It would have been just like this. It would have looked like that. Okay, so I've done the right thing here. I actually want to flip this around and pattern number one, which this is the other half of pattern number one, would have outside surfaces facing each other. So peel off the pattern and then these would go like this and you would sew these together. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be using uh, three components out of the bag making uh, package for the UltraFeed LSC, the knurled foot and feed dog, the magnetic guide, and uh, 16 needles. So I'm installing those in the machine now. The reason I'm using the knurled foot instead of the uh, uh, sawtooth foot is that the knurled uh, foot doesn't damage the leather of this bag and it also doesn't damage the uh, blackout uh, lining fabric as much as this foot does. So that's why I'm going to be using this one. Okay, we're going to be using hem bobs that are included in the kit. You can, uh, this is V69 polyester thread if you're making a, a, it separate of the kit. We're going to feed it through our, our, our bobbin case. Sometimes these are wound too full. If they don't spin freely, uh, take some excess thread off of the uh, bobbin, but this one's spinning nicely. Then we're going to take our other bobbin and we'll put it up here on the spindle and thread the machine as normal. I'm going to place the magnetic guide on the half inch uh, mark of the needle plate for the Ultrafeed LSZ 
and outside surfaces are facing each other of these two panels and we're just going to sew um, a half inch. I'm going to put my needle in center position because it's not. And I'm sewing about a uh, four millimeter to five millimeter straight stitch. Did a little bit of reversing at the beginning and we'll just sew as straight as possible down this edge. It makes it easy with the magnetic guide because you just keep the fabric up against that edge. Now, no reason to do a top stitch or anything. This middle section is going to be covered with leather, veg tan leather later on. So all I'm doing is securing it and do reversing at the end. And we're done. In this chapter, we'll be creating the front pocket. Okay, pattern 2A and 2B are the pockets. One of them is the inside of the pocket. It doesn't really matter which one is, but this is definitely the top because it has anchors. So I'm going to peel this off and this off and we're going to create the pockets next. This is 2A and 2B. This is what we're going to start with. Uh, 2A is the front. I'm going to notch the top. Obviously we can tell that the anchors are the top, but I notched it because if you don't have anchors, you may not know what the top is so that the patterns are the same if you have a pattern. We're going to peel off the uh, pattern. So now we're going to take our pattern and we are going to mark uh, from the top edge, this is over here one inch in, and the bottom edge one inch in, and we're going to do the exact same thing to the second pattern. Um, then we're going to take double sided tape to this one and to the second one, and we're going to put it along this edge, and this will have a single hem, a half inch hem, and the bottom edge as well. We'll peel off the transfer paper revealing the double sided uh, tape and we fold it to that line. And this double sided tape is a 100% solution dyed acrylic, which means it doesn't yellow and it sticks really well to upholstery fabrics. It isn't your normal double sided tape, which is usually a rubber uh, glue. Rubber glues tend to yellow. <clears throat> so I really recommend that you use the uh, uh, double sided tape or seam stick available from Sailrite if you want the best. Okay, we're going to do this one at the bottom side and we're going to do the same thing to the second one. Now I'm going to put double sided tape on one of the hems. This is the bottom side. Not that it matters. I think it's going to actually look good even if I use the other one as the top or the bottom. This is the inside of the pocket and we'll peel off the transfer paper. Don't worry about the unraveling of the fabric. You can use a hot knife if it's a synthetic fabric which will prevent the unraveling but uh, these are all going to be hidden um, because they're going to have finished edges through the hem. So what we want to do now is we want to base this one on top and if you have one that's bigger than the other, um, hopefully it's the top one um, because that's what you're going to see. So this is flush with this edge here and don't worry about the pattern. That doesn't matter. So that looks great like that. And then down here, this one's okay if it, if it extends beyond this. We don't want it to stick out. So if it does, if, if the bottom one sticks out, you need to readjust your hems. But you really want it to overlap a little bit like it is here or be flush. So this is perfect. We did a good job. So this is the outside of our pocket. And this is the inside of our pocket, which will be against the body of the bag. Now I like sewing the bag in about approximately a four millimeter uh, straight stitch. That's about there. It doesn't have to be exact and I'll raise the uh, reverse up so that when I do reverse it, it sews in about the same. Take some scrap, okay, you've, um, you've got scrap. Fold it in half and test your tension. Uh, bobbins don't sew, hem bobs don't sew different, or hem bobs have a tendency to sew or uh, tension different than a regular king spool do. So I'm just going to sew a couple inches and I'm going to check to make sure my tension's good. I want my knot to not be visible on the top side and if anything a little bit visible on the bottom but that's too much knot. So I'm going to tighten the upper tension because I got to get that knot pulled up a little bit deeper into the fabric. If you have too much uh, upper tension then you get puckering. So I've got the pocket and I have the uh, two zippers that we uh, basted together. Uh, find the top edge, the one that's really flush. This bottom edge is not flush as much, so this will be the outside surface. I like to sew with the outside surface up. And I'm going to position my, outs or my center foot so that it's flush with the uh, right side of the foot 
and I'm actually going to move my needle over to the right a little bit to get that stitch close to the top here. And uh, this is going to be covered with a strap later on, but I still want to do a little bit of reversing here. So I'm going to just go back a little teeny bit. And I'm going to put my magnetic guide down so that I sew nice and straight, right about there. When we get to the other side, we'll do a little bit of reversing there. This stitch is only um, applied to the top edge. Notice the anchors are up. We're going to set the pocket aside. Creating the zipper black is next. Okay, we have uh, pattern three and pattern four. Peel off the uh, pattern material on them, and we'll show you what to do with those. We're going to flip these to the back side, and what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to mark uh, one inch in because we're going to fold the edges over to one inch. So here and also over here. I'm just using a pencil for this. Um, like that. And we are going to put double sided tape on it. I'll just butt it up to each other so I can do this in one pass and then I'll just cut it. So double sided tape here. And notice that I ripped the double sided tape. I don't actually cut it. Um, I'm going to cut it when I, to separate it, but it's a lot easier to peel off the transfer paper if you rip it and we'll cut it to separate them. And then I'm going to peel back the transfer paper and we will fold each one of these to those to that line that we just created. Now we want these to be the exact same size. So uh, that's why I butt them up to each other as we fold this. Um, this side doesn't matter as much because uh, it Obviously, we'll butt those up to each other, but this side does. So make sure that when you create these hems, they are the exact same length. Next, we're gonna apply the seam stick along one edge of each one of these, because they're gonna be folded in half. This is gonna be our zipper plaque. And I will peel off the transfer paper. And then what I want to do is I want to fold this over and I need these ends to be flush to make it look really good. So I'm going to actually kind of fold that one and then I'm going to come over here and fold this one so that it's nice and flush and then make sure that it's folded in half all along its length. We're going to take pattern number five, which is a zipper stop, peel off the uh, paper, turn it so that the wrong side is up and we're going to put double-sided tape on both long sides. So here, and here. Then we'll peel off the transfer paper. Now this one we don't have to be as accurate about. Um, that's why I didn't mark it with a pencil. So I'm going to peel this off, revealing the glue. And we're going to simply take this one and fold it to approximately the center position um, like that. This is just a stop. And then we're going to flip it over and we're going to fold this one uh, so that it basically butts up to that. So you can see I'm not in the center, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so there's our stop. From the end of this, we want to mark the zipper at one and three quarter inch. And we're actually going to cut it to that size. So let's cut it there. And this is this short end is, is basically scrap. Now we're going, to, we're going to put double sided tape on. You can still see that mark um, that we marked. Uh, we're going to start it there and make sure that the double sided tape is to the outside away from the teeth. Notice the teeth are up. Okay, this is a coil number five zipper uh, by Linzip. If you look at the underside, there's no teeth present here. So the teeth must be up when you're putting this double sided tape on. And we'll break it here at the end and we'll start it directly across from each other on this side and do it on this side as well. We're going to take our zipper stop, which we created, and we're going to put double-sided tape on the back side, some clip, someplace close to the middle, and then we're going to actually just cut it in half. You have plenty, so don't worry about where you cut it. You don't have to measure it. 
and we'll peel off the transfer paper on this, on both pieces. And then we're going to uh, separate the zipper by pulling it like this, and it comes apart. Okay, and then on this side that has the double-sided tape that goes all the way to the end, not the side that doesn't have the double-sided tape, I'm going to peel off the transfer paper uh, about three inches or so. I'm going to take this stop and I'm going to put it on so that the zipper is hidden. The end of the zipper is hidden by the fabric. Oh, and I also want to put it on so that I can fold it around. So notice the zipper is underneath there and then I'm going to fold this over the teeth and make sure that it's tight up against the teeth as I fold and the edges are flush like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the excess off with my scissors or a hot knife. This, this fabric unravels a little bit, but this is going to be on the inside of the bag. A hot knife would keep it from unraveling. Okay, and then we're going to do the exact same thing to this one. This is a serrated edge hot knife, and this fabric unravels quite a bit. Um, you, as you can see, as soon as you do this, that stops the unraveling. That's a choice you can make or not make. So let's just grab one of these zippers. Uh, this is the one we'll start with. We'll peel off the transfer paper and then we're going to take this uh, half. This is the folded edge. This is the raw edge. Um, and we're going to position this on so that it's just protruding about an eighth inch away from the stop. And we want to put it on so that the zipper is exposed about this much. There's no right or wrong way to do this. You just want to make sure that you have enough uh, flange to sew but you definitely want it to go on nice and straight. So I'm trying to eye it to make sure that I don't have any excess curves in it or anything like that. The double-sided tape holds it, but that's basically what it should look like when you're done. Okay, we're gonna set this one aside, and then I like to actually have the teeth away from me, so I'm gonna flip this one over, and then I'm gonna flip this over so that the anchors, let's see, let's make sure that that would be, look good. Yeah, that'll, that'll look good. One anchor goes one way, one goes the other, that's fine. I'm just trying to do whatever looks best for the pattern. Now here is the key. I want these ends to be equal, and I want the stops to be directly across from each other, and it looks like it's going to be perfect like that. Um, if it's not, make modifications. And then we're going to take the zippers now. We can move the magnetic guide out of the way. And I'm going to sew them with the zipper all the way over here against this foot. So I'm going to lower this down and I'm going to move my needle all the way to the left to get closer to this fold here. And I'm going to hold the trailer threads. I'm going to make sure that I feed with that foot up against the teeth. And I'm going to do some reversing here. I definitely want to do reversing. Okay. And then we'll just sew down this uh, length of zipper. And we're going to do the same thing to the second one. Uh, we'll stop here and I'll show you what it, we do when we get to the stop. Okay, we're almost to the stop. What I want to do is I want to just sew a little bit slower here and make sure that the uh, sewing machine walks over that. And then we want to uh, reverse there. So that secures it well. And then I'm going to just go ahead and put this one in. Now this one's going to start here at the stop. Um, so I'm going to sew to this one. This is just a fast way to get things done. Make sure that foot's going to be in line with the zipper's teeth as it sews. We're sewing in the stop here, so I'm going to do some reversing here, and we'll repeat this step. We're going to cut the threads that uh, join these two together, and now we're going to do, uh, line them up, and we're going to put on our slider. This is a coil slider. You can see that there's a fat side to it, that goes up with the teeth, and obviously the slider goes up with the teeth. This is a single pull, non-locking slider. So I'm going to start it on the teeth here, and then I'm going to take this one and start it on here like this, and push it into place, and it's that easy. These, this is a Lin zip zipper, and a Lin zip zipper actually zips uh, easier than a YKK. I actually like them a lot. Now I'm a little teeny tiny bit off. You can see that this one's uh, slightly off. I could actually make an adjustment, but it's good enough for me. I'm happy with that.
Okay, so notice that our, our stops are almost directly across from each other. They'll never be perfect, but if they're off by uh, an eighth of an inch, you need to reinstall the slider. This is perfect. Next up, we'll be creating the bag handles. So now I have six and seven, and we're gonna peel off the pattern on both of them. We're gonna flip this upside down and make sure that it's as straight as possible. We're gonna put our clear acrylic ruler on the edge, and we're gonna strike a line that is one inch from that edge on the wrong side of the fabric. So nobody will see this, and we'll do this on this side as well. One inch from that, this edge all the way down its length. I'm gonna put the double-sided tape down both long edges, just like this, about an a eighth inch away from the edge. We'll peel off the transfer paper of the seam stick quarter inch uh, basting tape for canvas and upholstery, which I again recommend, and we'll, we'll fold it up to that line. And we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, we have the double-sided tape on both sides. Each side is hemmed over a half inch. Now I'm gonna put double-sided tape, and I'm actually gonna put this double-sided tape well away from the edge, because I don't wanna sew through three layers of double-sided tape when I sew my handles in place. So this is a little bit further back. We're gonna be folding this in half, and we're only gonna put this on this one side. Doesn't matter which side you put it on, whether it be here or what, there. We'll peel this off all the way down its length. And then I actually like to start about a quarter inch from the end. I don't know why, it just seems easier for me to match up a fold that way. And then I go this way, because this is easier for me. And we just want to match up this uh, edge. This is going to be your bag handle. And we'll do this all the way down this side. Then we're going to come back and match it up going this direction, which for me is a little bit harder to do. That's why I only leave a quarter inch. Or, that's why I only leave about a quarter of it undone. Okay, we're gonna start sewing with this side. This side's got a, a fold like this. Um, I like to sew it closed completely, and I'm gonna match it up to the right side of the center foot and lower the foot, and I'm gonna move my needle all the way to the uh, right here so I can get close to that edge. Now you can position the stitch anywhere you like, but this is where I typically like to place it. I'm also gonna put my magnetic guide here just so that I can run alongside of that and I don't have to pay much attention. There's no reason to do any reversing here. Just so, and because we have the magnetic guide there, uh, this is a really easy process. We're gonna sew down this side, and then we're gonna sew down the other side in the same manner. So here we are doing the other side. Same process. This is a one and a half inch bag handle folder. It's rather expensive, but it is awesome if you're doing this as a profession. So it's a swing away and all you do is just feed the fabric in. Obviously this isn't required, as you can see we, we showed you an alternative way to do it. This is a four inch uh, strip of fabric and we feed it in with a screwdriver on this side because it has a little slot until it comes out the end. Like that. And then you do have to pay attention to the exiting point and we have to reposition the needle for this, so let me get it. Uh, uh, I need to push a little bit more of this through. There we go. Now we can sew it. So, am I going to sew at the right spot? Yep, it looks like I am. Now I'm going to put my finger here, and I'm also going to have to make sure that it feeds on neatly here. So let's uh, start sewing here. Okay, so when you get it fed through here and it's coming out nice and neat, um, again, we're not gonna do any reversing. I do wanna grab it here and I do wanna make sure that it's fit, being fed in neatly here as we go. Jesus. So I'm pulling uh, from the back side just to make sure that everything's coming through and it folds it and creates our handle in one pass. We do have to still put a stitch on the other side, but we don't need it when we put that stitch on. Now this uh, one and a half inch uh, bag handle folder may be available in the future at Sarah. Right? We are still experimenting with it, and it may not be uh, showing, or it may not be exactly the same uh, configuration as you see here, um, but it may be available in the future. Coming up, we'll be sewing our pocket and handles to our decorative body. Okay, one thing we forgot, which is kind of important but easy to remedy, 
is to mark where these two lines are. So I'm just taking the pattern and putting it on top of this and I'll just take some chalk and mark where those are because that's where our straps are gonna go. And I'll use the same side of this pattern for this side over here. So we're gonna mark it along this top edge at those locations. Okay, we're gonna put the pocket on, which is here. And I'm gonna come up from this side two inches. So I'm using a clear acrylic ruler, making sure that it's straight and striking a line in near the middle um, for that uh, pocket. Then we're going to take the pocket, which side looks best. We also want the anchors to be up. This side does, looks really good. The bottom looks like it's all flush. So you just want to pick the best looking side. I'm going to put double sided tape on here, just on the sides, not at the top, obviously, because it's a pocket and not at the bottom, because if I don't, or if I sew through the double-sided tape, or if the double-sided tape is, is exposed at the bottom of the pocket, then things might stick to it. So just on the sides, because this is where the straps are gonna go in a later step. I'm gonna peel off the transfer paper, and how do I find the center? Well, what I do is I take the pocket, see these chalk marks, and I center it at the chalk mark, between, so there's about an eighth inch and an eighth inch on this side. Then I take my clear acrylic ruler and I put it on here so that it's uh, parallel with the edge and I just move it down and then I know that I'm centered and baste it in that location. I'm going to sew here, no reason to do reversing because the strap will actually secure it on this side. And then I'm going to turn a corner, sew here and sew up here, no reversing here because it's just a tacking stitch to hold this in place. I'm gonna move my needle to the right and I'm gonna sew close to the outside edge and we'll sew down this side. This just basically holds the, the sides of the pocket so when we put the straps on it, it doesn't move around. Now when I get down here, I need to make sure that this is in the right spot. So I can even use my reverse lever if I, oh, that's pretty good right there. So the needle's buried, I lifted the needle's coming up slightly. I lift my foot. I pivot on the buried needle. I'm going to stuff this fabric through the throat of the machine. There's a the little um, fabric thing. I just tuck that in so it's hidden. And then this side's going to be visible, so I want to be nice and straight, but that's pretty easy to do. And then we'll come to this corner, and we'll just come up here and sew and finish this off without reversing it to the end. Okay, so from the chalk marks to the chalk mark, use a straight edge and strike a line. This is where the strap's gonna go. I'm using the chalk, which easily comes up with a wet rag. Always check your fabric uh, marking utensils to make sure that, that lines come up and do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna put the clear acrylic ruler on one inch from the raw edge and I wanna create a T, fairly big, on this side, this is where I'm going to stop sewing the strap, and I need to do that on this side as well um, so that I know we don't want to sew past that point. Now I'm going to take double sided tape and I'm going to put it about, oh, oops, I don't want to go past that T. I'm going to start at the T and put it about a quarter inch from that chalk line all the way down. And I don't really want to go through the middle here because that's where we're going to uh, stop the, the um, strap. And I'm going to transfer over to this side and go up to that T on this side. And we'll do the same thing over here. See, see I stopped at basically where this notch is. Doesn't have to be exact, but close. Okay, I forgot to mark a, a start point for the strap. So I've taken my clear acrylic ruler and I've put it a half inch past this notch here. And I want to I want to strike a line here and here and do the same thing over here uh, so that I know where the strap should basically um, end. So I'm going to have the strap end at that half inch mark because it's going to have uh, leather at the bottom and I want it to ride right up along that chalk line. The anchor is going to be up here but then when the strap comes around here I want to make sure I don't put any extra twists in it. The anchor is going to be going down here. Now that's the nature of the beast. If you want it 
to uh, the anchor to be up, you'd have to obviously seam it together at the top. That's a choice that you can make. It just makes it more complicated, and I don't think this looks bad. So there we go. We have that on, and we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to start sewing here, and we're going to sew directly on top of these stitches. And some of you may say, oh, that's terrible, but uh, it's the only way we can really sew these in. There are other ways to do it without doing that, but uh, this is by far the easiest way. I've going to put my needle in the center position and I'm going to start right there at that mark and I'm going to I'm going to turn the worker bee power pack system down to its slowest speed so I can be very accurate here and make sure that the stitches are on top of the previous stitches I think they just look better that way instead of wandering around so at the beginning here we want to make sure that we do some reversing because that we want this to be locked down well even though it is going to have a stitch across the top later on so we're going to sew down this side. Okay, what I'm going to do when I get to the bottom of this, um, I don't really need to do any reversing because this is going to have uh, leather on top of it. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to lift my foot and I'm going to move on to this next strap and sew down this side here. And then we'll go to the top again and we'll sew down um, this side in the same manner. And then we'll do the same thing with these straps. In this chapter, we're going to be adding a leather bottom to the bag. This is a veg tan leather. It's 5 inches by 15 inches, cut to size. What we're going to do is we're going to just use uh, this, this uh, deluxe snap faster installation tool base, and we're going to use an awl, and we're going to round the corners for a good looking piece. And we'll do that to all four corners, and then you can just take some good scissors and carefully cut like that. So this is the veg tan leather. We rounded the corners. We did not burnish the edges. You can do that if you'd like. I'm just going to leave it raw. We cut it with uh, scissors. We're going to put double sided tape down both long edges, which actually sticks really well to this leather. This is the underside or the wrong side. And we're going to peel off the transfer paper. Now we have a seam in ours because of the fact that we had a directional fabric and we wanted the anchors to be uh, going up. Yours may not have that, but we need to make sure that seam is uh, splayed out when we base this on. Now this should be about a half inch from this edge and a half inch over here, and then we want it centered between the cutouts. So I'm going to eyeball that, and I'm going to press in the middle first, and then uh, press to the sides. Make sure it goes on straight. And if it's a little bit off, adjust it. So notice how the veg tan leather hides the uh, ends of the straps. And we have about a half inch here and a half inch here. And it looks like it's straight there. I pro probably should check it to make sure that it is with a ruler. I'm not going to show that. You would obviously know what to do here. We're going to sew very closely to the edge of this leather. So I'm going to use this uh, right side of the center foot. And I'm going to move my a needle to the right. And I don't want to really, well, I guess I'll start right here in the middle. doesn't matter really where you start, but that's going to be where stitches are overlapped. I'm not going to do any reversing here. I'm going to start sewing, and um, my stitch length is about four millimeters. And I'm going to do this very slowly. I have the worker be set up both for the slowest uh, speed, top end speed, so it doesn't take off on me. When I get to the corners, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew really slow and pivot the work around as I sew around that corner. Okay, and so that's how we're going to sew this assembly together. Uh, when we come back to this part, I'll show you what we do there. So I'm sewing around the last corner here, and I remember we talked about the fact that I'm using the knurled foot uh, for this assembly. The knurled foot doesn't damage the leather, and also it doesn't damage the blackout fabric. So when I get to these stitches, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to stay in contact so that it actually sews over them by a few stitches. One, two, three. Again, no reversing. And then I'm going to take a hot knife or a... Uh, we could use a thread burner as well. I'm going to leave these threads a little bit long so I will burn them so it actually creates a nice mushroom. Let's take it over to the table and show that. 
So there's only one thread that's sticking up. You got If you use a hot knife and not a thread burner, you have to be careful. So I'm going to touch the thread, and then I'm going to press on it and see how it makes a lot of little button. That's not easily going to come out. So here's some of our chalk marks. I've already removed most of them, but this is just a wet rag. And we've already tested to make sure that the marks come off easily with a wet rag. Coming up, we'll be sewing the decorative fabric together. The next process is to fold it so outside surfaces are facing each other. And then these edges will be sewn. So we'll sew a half inch here and a half inch here. Then we're going to sew these together, which we'll show you what, how to do that when we get to the machine. So now this is the top edge. I'm going to match this up and put it in the sewing machine. I'm going to put the magnetic guide at a half inch, which is there. And we're going to start here. We're going to make sure the needle's in the center position for this because we're sewing a half inch from the edge. And I'm going to definitely do some reversing here. And I'm going to turn this up, the worker bee. And we just want to match up these edges as we sew all the way to this bottom. Now that leather is a little bit bulky. I'll show you what we do when we get to that. Okay, so because this leather is a little bit crispy, I just fold it in half. Crispy. <laughs> Didn't have my Rice Krispies this morning. And then I just hold the fabric so that it's lined up. And then reverse here at the bottom. Okay, we're going to do the same thing to the other side. We'll not show that. The next step, this is kind of nice because the leather basically creates a beautiful triangle, is to splay this out. Okay. Now if yours doesn't have a directional fabric, you won't have a seam here. Yours will just be uh, straight fabric. So now that looks good. It's kind of lined up almost perfectly. Not quite perfect, but that's, that's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this and I'm going to flip this down because I actually like to sew with this side up. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to hold with my fingers and I'm going to transfer this over. And this is a half inch. And I'm going to start sewing at the folded edge and make sure I do some reversing. I don't want to sew through my leather. So I can feel my leather here. If, if, if your leather is too close to the edge, make sure that you make a different uh, a seam smaller than a half inch if it's too close. Uh, but mine's not. So I'm going to reverse there and then I'm going to sew. I, I'm going to feel the leather as I sew to make sure I don't sew into it. I want to sew almost right beside it. And then when I get to this side, I'm going to do some reversing here. And that's all you do. And we'll do the exact same thing to the uh, other uh, corner. So. There's our leather. Our edge of our leather is right there, which is perfect. Adding a zipper stop is next. This is our veg tan leather, and we're going to use it. It comes in the kit. You can also buy it a la carte. We're going to fold it over the end of the zipper, which makes a beautiful zipper stop, but it's a little bit on the thick side. So I'm going to use the Sayerite Skyver and we are going to thin it out. So I'm going to hold the leather and this really does a good job of reducing the thickness of the leather. So I'm going to do this for a while until I get the appropriate thickness that I like. Bam! Works nice. And that'll make it fold over the uh, edge really nicely. This is our uh, alphabet and number set, quarter inch. Um, I'm going to put the E on. I'm going to. You don't have to do this. This obviously doesn't come in the kit. There's a little mark at the bottom of the stamp that indicates the bottom of of it. And I put a, a ruler on this, and I've I've misted my leather down and taped the ruler in place so that I can make it nice and straight. I've already calculated where I want this to go. And I'm going to give it, oops, see there's my mark. That's the bottom. So I almost messed up already. <laughs> give it a few blows. 
That's beautiful. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to place it in there. E-L, these are my initials. I'm going to put the L on. I'm going to look for that mark at the bottom right there. There's the little mark. I'm going to push this beside it and make sure that it's butted up to it. L. And then I'm going to put the L back in there. And my last name is Grant, so I have a G. And the bottom mark is there. I'm going to butt this up to it. Mm -hmm. There we go. E-L-G. This is the right side of our leather, so I want to definitely put some double-sided tape on this because I want this to stay where I put it on the end of the zipper. So I'm going to do it on the two long sides. I'm going to peel off the transfer paper, revealing the acrylic glue, which is much better than a rubber glue. And I want my initials to be up, so I'm going to make sure they're on this side. And uh, the zipper doesn't have to go all the way to the end, but we definitely want it centered on there. If the zipper does go past your fold mark, then you need to uh, uh, cut the zipper shorter. And we want it sandwiched like that. I'm going to release some of the uh, foot pressure to make sure they don't mar the leather. And as you can see, I released it quite a bit. I'm also going to reduce the stitch length because it's easier to, to go around corners with smaller stitch lengths. So this is probably three millimeters or so. And I'm going to start right here. And I'm, the needle's already over to the right. And I'm not going to do any reversing. I'm going to hold my trailing threads. There we go. And I definitely want the worker bee to tur be turned down all the way uh, so I have really good slow speed. Because this is a pretty small piece of leather. Okay, when I get to this corner, I might even grab the balance wheel just to make sure that I get it at the right spot because I don't really want to, and make sure the needle comes up before you lift your foot. That way you don't miss a stitch. And we'll come down this side. Now I'm going to start rotating around slowly. Let's, I'm going to walk it again, and then I'm going to lift my foot and turn it around here. Now we're going to be sewing through our zipper. I'm going to turn it a little bit, rotating the balance wheel by hand, lift my foot a little bit, rotate by hand, and then lift my foot and, and pivot around here. Make sure you lower your foot before you continue to sew again. Okay, I'm directly where I started. The needle's on the way up, but not all the way out of the leather. We're going to come over here and I'm going to sew over these stitches a little bit by one or two stitches. And we're going to stop there, no reversing, and I'm going to burn the ends of the thread. Okay, so you can see that our leather got marred a little bit with the, uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it, knurled foot. But uh, I think you'll see when, it, it, when a little bit later on when it dries out a little bit more. You should definitely make sure that the leather is dry before you do this because that will keep that from happening. But this is still acceptable to me. All right, so I pulled that knot through, and you can use a thread burner. I'm using a hot knife, and this time I'm going to try to push so that the mushroom is closer to my project. This is a good way to keep the threads from coming out without having to do reversing. And we'll do the same thing to the underside. Okay, the presser foot kind of made a mess of the G, so there's my mark. And you can actually find the spot pretty easily because it's indented. And that definitely helps a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit more. 
just don't want to do it too much because you have that zipper going through the middle now. Yeah, that, that stitch at the corner is not the greatest, but the ones around the perimeter everywhere else are good. We're done. In this chapter, we'll be cutting out our lining fabric. This is our blackout drapery lining fabric. It actually works excellent for lining fabrics in a bag. This is a polyester uh, fabric. Uh, this is the polyester side, and this side has a little bit of a soft sheen to it. This is the outside surface or the right side for me. You can use either, but this is what I prefer. So right now our right side is facing up, and this is the pattern 8 through 11, which is used for the lining fabric. And the size of this, just so you know how much lining you'll need, if I measure from edge to edge, it's, it's a little bit less than 46 inches. and the width of it is about uh, 22, a little bit less than 22 inches. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip our pattern so that the numbers are facing down the wrong way. And we are going to spray an adhesive on this so that we can stick it down and then cut it out. And I'm gonna use Super 88 adhesive for this. You can also use pins and just pin it in place. Um, but I like doing it this way, and I'm spraying it on the pattern material, not on the fabric. Okay, so we do have a little bit of working time, but you want to do this rather quickly because it won't stick well afterwards. Now the numbers are facing you. They were facing me before. That doesn't matter. So I'm going to put it on here, make sure that it, the pattern's on top of the fabric so that uh, I don't have to, so I can cut through the fabric. It doesn't have to be straight because there's no pattern to this. We work out all the wrinkles starting from the center out and now we are ready to cut. So I'm just taking uh, scissors and we'll cut right on top of the lines that we have here and I will leave the pattern on top of the fabric that we cut out and once these are all cut out we'll show you what's next. Okay we have them all cut out now these little uh, squares or rectangles they really are should be cut out as well here and here cut directly on the lines. In this chapter, we'll be creating the inside pockets. We're going to take pattern 11 and we're going to take off the pattern material. Now you may want to save the patterns because you may want to make a bag with a, your choice fabric afterwards. This is the soft side for me, so this is the right side. I'm going to flip it so the wrong side is up. I'm going to take my clear acrylic ruler and I'm going to scribe a line with a pencil very lightly on the back side at one inch. Then I'm going to move it up and I'm going to mark it at one and a half inches with a light line. We'll be using a quarter inch seam stick uh, for canvas and upholstery and we put it along this edge and we will fold it over a half inch to the first line which is one inch away from this edge. Obviously we struck that line on the long side not the short side. So now we just fold this over, try to be as accurate as possible and baste it here. Okay, ready? Now we'll take the basting tape and we'll put it on top of that uh, single hem and we're going to create a double hem. So we're going to fold up to the second line, peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue I'm going to flip this over. This is going to be our pocket for the inside of the bag. And I like to just mark a line and do this lightly. This is the right side of the fabric, so the soft side, the hem is facing down. And I'm going to, I'm going to mark this very lightly with my pencil at five inches with the clear acrylic ruler. And then I do that over here. Now you can make these pockets any size you want. If you have a cell phone that, that you want to drop into a pocket and make it a fairly tight fit, you can do that. So five inches here, five inches here. Then I'm just going to go six inches here. So we have the uh, drapery blackout fabric, a scrap piece, uh, folded over so there's two layers and the uh, right side is out. We're going to put the machine in about four millimeter stitch length. It doesn't have to be exactly four. We're in straight stitch and we want to sew uh, to make sure that we've got the right tension. So I'm going to sew a few stitches and then we're going to check our tension to make sure that it's good before we started on our project. So you can see the knot is just a little bit on the top side here. 
which means I have a little bit too much upper tension. The knot's pulled through the bottom, so I'm going to reverse the uh, tension knob about a half turn and so one more time. Because we want those knots to be um, in the middle of the fabric or on the underside, if any, so there's not too much tension, which causes puckering. So yeah, now the knots are going down a little bit deeper. I'm going to do a little bit less tension, and hopefully that'll be enough. So let's, let's sew it one more time. Oh yeah, that's perfect right there. The knots are a little bit on the back side, probably a little bit too much, so I'm going to go a quarter turn and we should be set. This is our lining. This is the hem. I like to have the hem face down and I'm going to put my magnetic I'm going to put my magnetic guide on a little bit at the forward face of this because I want my uh, fabric to come against the right side of the center foot and I'm going to position it right about there, lower the foot, and then I'm also going to move the needle to the right so I get my stitch a little bit closer to that raw edge. And there's really no reason to do reversing because this is going to be sewn in, but I still like to do a little bit of reversing here. Uh, and then we're going to sew down this edge. Try to be as straight as possible. That magnetic guide definitely helps in this. When we get to the other side, we're going to do just a little bit of reversing at the end. And that hem will be sewn in place. Let's take, take it back over to our table. This is pattern 10, our lining fabric, and I'm going to peel off the pattern. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the clear acrylic ruler, and these are our notches. I'm going to measure up two inches from the notches with the clear acrylic ruler so the line is perfectly straight. And I'm going to lightly uh, mark the fabric. Now this is the um, right side of the fabric. This is the one with the soft backing, which is what I want, even though you could use the other side. So we have a soft line there. So this is our pocket, and I need to create a single hem at the bottom edge. So we're going to measure up one inch, and we're going to strike a line. This is the wrong side. And then I'm going to use double-sided tape and baste this hem in place, just like we did at the top, except for that's a double hem. This is the bottom side. Going to fold up to that line and I'll show you what's next. We're only going to put basting tape on the two short sides. The reason I don't put it at the bottom is that uh, we don't want that basting tape to be uh, present when uh, after we stitch it for items to get stuck on. So this, this uh, basting tape on the edges will not ever be visible because it's going to be in our seam allowance when we go to sew the lining together. So peel off the transfer paper. There's the line we struck on the lining, or the inner body. And we are going to line it up with the bottom edge of that single hem, and that should have the edges flush. And we're going to baste it here. And baste it here, and make sure that it's nice and flat, as you can see here. So the only two spots that are holding it are here and here. Now we're going to take it to the machine. We're going to sew here, though this will be sewn later on, and then we'll sew across here and we're going to sew up to here. There's no reason to do any reversing here because this is going to be sewn uh, together uh, when we complete the lining. So we're just going to sew down this side rather close. I'm not a half inch in. We're going to have a half inch hem later. We're going to sew to this corner and I'm going to bury my needle close to that edge like it is here. The needle comes up slightly, lift my foot, pivot on the buried needle. So I'm really close to that edge. If I do one more stitch, I'll probably be off. So what I like to do is I like to use the reverse lever and I'm gonna roll the balance wheel by hand and I'm gonna use the reverse lever to get that stitch right where I want it. So right there is where I want it. And then I'll lift my foot and pivot on the buried needle. And now I lower my foot and you notice that the fabric is right against the uh, right side of my center foot. And we'll sew along this edge. And then we're gonna sew up the other edge and uh, then we'll show you what's next. Hello. 
These nippers also come with the bag making package for the Ultrafeed LSE. Okay, so now we've got that in place. Now we're gonna go to our pencil marks and I'm just gonna show you on one of these. I'm gonna move my needle in the center position here, though it doesn't have to be. And I'm gonna drop my foot so that the needle's gonna be in line with that light pencil mark. I'm gonna hold my trailing threads here. And I'm gonna do some reversing here at the bottom. And then I'm gonna sew up to the top and we'll do some reversing there as well. So I'm gonna reverse back and forward twice and we're gonna do that for all these pencil marks that we did. Sewing our zipper plaque to the lining is next. This is eight and nine. We already took the nine off. And this is our lining fabric with the pockets facing up pocket tops are up here. So we're going to take our quarter inch basting tape and we are going to apply it uh, close to this raw edge here and also over here on this side. Now we're going to take our zipper and the zipper is facing up. This is the underside of the zipper the zipper gets centered. Uh, so you should have equal space in here and here. Does it have to be exact? No, it doesn't have to be. I mean, if you want to measure, you can. Peel off the transfer paper and it gets basted to that edge. And that looks about right, right there. And it should be flush with that edge. Okay. Double-sided tape will now go on top of the zipper uh, flange right at to, close to the edge and peel off the transfer paper revealing the glue and you take one of these patterns now I can feel the soft sides over here I want the soft side to face the zipper now if you get it wrong it's not a big deal I mean because both sides are hard it's hard to tell one side from the other um, but I like the soft side being the inside of the bag. And then baste it all the way to the other side, as shown here. This side's not completely flush. It's off by a little bit, but that's not a big deal. Uh, we are flush over here. And I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. So now we need to do the same thing to the other side, but I'm going to take this over and sew this first. I'm going to put my machine back in about a four millimeter stitch length. I'm going to make sure my needle's in center and I'm going to put the magnetic guide at a half inch. Then I'm going to sew along this edge and I am going to do some reversing here. Turn, uh, turn up my worker bee so I can sew faster here. And we'll sew right through this. And we'll do some reversing when we reach the other end. And then we're going to go back to the table and show you what to do on the opposite side. We're going to peel the transfer paper off on the other side. And here's the part we just sewed. We're going to take this and we're going to lay it on. It seems weird. So that the bottom side is facing the correct side of our lining. This is the side with the pockets. So we want this, uh, the edges to be in line with each other. In other words, the edge of the lining should be in line uh, with, uh, okay. And then we're gonna put double-sided tape on top of this and we are gonna put that other half on it. And we'll make sure that the fuzzy side is facing this. This is the fuzzy side. So I'm gonna face down like that and baste it in place just like we did on the other one. In this chapter, we're gonna be sewing our lining fabric together. Now we have to sew up this side this leather thing gets in the way so what I do is I tuck it under and I use one of these clips just to keep it in place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put double-sided tape. Now I, the reason I'm, I didn't put double-sided tape on the decorative fabric uh, but I want this uh, seam to line up so I'm going to put double-sided tape all the way down this side. Now we're not going to do the same thing to the opposite side because we need a hole to pull this thing right side out when we're done. So on this side, we're gonna go all the way down, and I usually do it on the side that has the leather uh, end stop. 
peel off the transfer paper. I usually um, start here at the top, and what I want is I want these uh, ends to, or the these seam allowance to basically line up. So this is a little tricky because of that bulky leather, but I'm just lining up that and then making sure these edges are on top of each other. And I baste that down, and then I baste the rest of the way down, lining up the edge all the way down here. Okay, so now, notice this is off slightly. It, it looks like it has too much material on this side. I'm just gonna trim that away. It's not a big deal, or leave it. it this is the, the uh, lining, so it's not a big deal if this is off. Um, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna take this to the machine. I already have everything set up for my half inch seam. I'm gonna sew. So we're gonna do a little bit of reversing there, and we're gonna sew a half inch. Now make sure you're a half inch, because if you're not a half inch, then this lining seam at the top won't line up with your decorative fabric. And remember, you've got that leather in here, so you're gonna have to push this down as you sew. The top is the most important, being a half inch from the edge. Okay, and do reversing there. There we are. Okay, so I flipped it around. Now this side's easier actually, but yet a little bit more complicated. I want to unzip this because you can see it just makes the job a lot easier. Um, I put the pocket down on the table on the side without the pockets over here. Um, we want to leave an opening. So I'm going to put double-sided tape here and break it. And then I'm going to put it here. And I usually leave the opening the size of the pocket. So I'm not putting any double-sided tape on the pocket. And that's where I will begin and start and stop sewing. And I definitely want to do some reversing there because we are going to have um, some pressure against the seam when we go to turn this right side out. So again, everything is wrong side out. The, uh, this is the right side of the, of the uh, lining fabric. I'm going to make sure that this is lined up. So we start here at the seam and then baste, making sure the edges are lined up. And then we want to make sure that we don't pull too much with the fabric here because there's no double-sided tape there. And we're going to start, I can feel where the pocket is. I'm going to um, stop there. And let, let me just show you. So we'll put it in here. We still are at a half inch. We'll do a little bit of reversing. I'm going to fold this up. It can go down too, but it doesn't really matter. It's not going to be noticeable um, whether it be folded up or down. Okay, so now I can feel the pockets right here. So at that pocket, reverse. Okay, then lift your needle out of the fabric, wiggle your balance wheel, come down to the bottom of the pocket, which is right about there. Oops, no, at the bottom of the pocket's way down here. Boy, that would have been a mistake. Would, have been, would not have been big enough. So there's the bottom of the pocket. And you want to do some reversing here, because it's going to come under stress, and then do reversing at the end. Okay, so there, we'll close that up later on after we've sewed the two together. So now we're going to do, sew this shut. So we spread this apart, and I usually like to put my fingers inside, because that way it kind of folds uh, an inch or so away from that. And then, um, bada bing, bada boom. It's basically the same process that we did for the decorative fabric, um, except for there's no leather in it. And if it's not folding well, put a sharp object in, or not a sharp, a stick-like object like the screwdriver in there, and that'll splay it out nicely. Doesn't have to be perfect here, it just has to be close. And we want to sew this shut, doing some reversing here, basically right to the edge of the fabric. and. We will sew all the way to the side, a half inch from that edge. Doesn't matter where that seam allowance folds. Right to here, do some reversing. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing to the other corner. We're not gonna show that other corner. In this next chapter, we'll be sewing the decorative fabric to the lining fabric. Okay, we wanna open up the zipper if it's not already open. And I left that little tag in place because I don't want that to get in the way, that leather, leather thing. And I'm gonna put double-sided tape uh, along this edge here. So right here. 
and make sure it's pressed down well. And we want to go right to this uh, corner here. So this is a scenario where sometimes I actually cut the double-sided tape rather than rip it because I don't have much working space in here. It went a little past the corner, which is fine because we have to put it on the other side too. So I'm going to flip it over like that. And I'm also going to put it over here. We're not going to show that. This is the wrong side. Uh, we need to turn this right side out. This is the decorative fabric. Okay, so now we have the, a pocket on one side. We only put a pocket on this side, none on that side. I like to put the pocket um, on the side that doesn't have the pockets. You can see the pockets are sewing on this side. This is the right side of the lining fabric. Right sides always go together. So this means this goes inside and I like the pocket facing up where the, there's no pocket on the lining. Doesn't matter if you get it the other way. It's just a preference. Stuff it inside. Okay, so I'm going to work on getting this inside and then I'll show you what's next. All right, we're going to take this handle, we're going to stuff it in there because we don't want that in our way. And we're going to do the same thing with this handle, we're going to stuff it down in there. And now we have this edge and this is the right side, this is the right side facing each other, this is the wrong side of the decorative fabric. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at this corner. We want this seam to be lined up with this seam. So I'm going to peel back the transfer paper and we're going to uh, make sure this seam is over top of that seam like that. And then we're going to match up this edge as we go along. Don't worry about all the unraveling. It's pretty much going to be hidden when we're done and we'll come across here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here. And I'm actually going to go to this corner next because it, if it's a little bit off, I'd rather have the corners matched up than anything else. Peel off of this one and we're going to stick this one at that corner. I'll peel off a little bit of that other one too. So make sure this is lined up because you're going to see that. And then start walking at this direction. Okay. And when we get to the other side, if there's a little bit of a bubble, we can distribute that. In other words, if one's off slightly than the other, then we can actually kind of pull or stretch one fabric more than the other. Um, we'll find out here in a second. That looks good. Looks good. So there's a little teeny tiny bubble. That's so small, it's not going to matter. I just press it down and bam, it's gone. So now we're going to flip it over here and we're going to just base this side down in the same manner, peeling off the transfer paper. We don't need to show this since the process is the same. You can actually open this up because your handles, you don't want your handles to be in the way. And then you can grab your handles and pull them down towards the bottom of the bag because um, we're going to sew close to that top up there. We can start sewing anywhere. I'm going to start here at the top of the bag. We're going to sew a half inch from the raw edge. I will do a little bit of reversing. Make sure you don't sew through your handles and sew around the perimeter because everything's basted in place, this is pretty easy. Watch what I do when I get to this uh, end here. So I'm going to lay this out. I didn't sew through my handle. I'm going to lay this out flat here. It's all basted. I'm going to either, oh, you can open this up or you can just tuck it to the side. I'm just going to tuck it to the side because it's a rather light fabric. Once I get past that, I'm going to bury my needle down and then I'm going to just flip this whole thing like that and sew down this side. So we're going to do that until we get back to where we started again and then I'll show you what's next. Okay, so now comes the fun part, okay? We have to turn it right side out. So I'm going to open up that hole that we talked about earlier and I like to just grab the leather bottom and actually start forcing it through. You may say, well, this is never going to work. It does work. Once I get the leather out, it's much easier. There we go. So this all comes through. Sewing the lining fabric shut is next. So once we have it turned right side out, now we have to close up this uh, opening. And one way to do that is to, to actually just fold this over a half inch and fold this one over a half inch. 
Again, I like to use double sided tape, so I'll put double sided tape on the wrong side here and on the wrong side here, and then that creates a fold, and I don't put it on the top side. Uh, I'll put the double sided tape on and show you how we do this. I have double sided tape on this side so we can fold it at a half inch, and it's a little bit tricky to get the double sided tape on because you're basically working from the wrong side of the bag. So I'm going to peel it off of that, and I'm going to roughly guess at a half inch. This doesn't have to be terribly accurate. We have a half inch on that one and we're going to take this one off and fold it into approximately a half inch as well. Looks good. Looks good. And then you can see that I don't even need double side tape here. I'm just going to press these together and take it over to the sewing machine and sew them together. So it's sewing together here, not sewing together here. I'm going to actually start a little bit where I stopped sewing and I'm going to move my needle to the right to get closer to that edge. And I'm going to do some reversing here. I'm going to stop sewing right about there, right where we began, right about there, and do some reversing, and that's done. Adding a perimeter top stitch is next. Now we stuff this inside and we push it out to the corners. Not too cr critical to do that yet because we still have to do a top stitch around the top here. So I still have this this leather tab uh, se uh, secured back to keep it out of the way, so I'm going to keep that clip in place. Okay, so we have the uh, straps here. This is our top edge. This is our zipper. So this edge here, where we just sewed it on, needs to be folded back so that we see a little bit of the decorative fabric, and the lining fabric is folded back away from that edge slightly, so it's not visible from the outside of the bag. And I'm going to start sewing right at one of these uh, straps and I, I, I'm going to take my time with this one because I don't want to um, have it be different. I want it to be the same all the way around. Um, I've got good tension and here's my, my webbing. I'm sewing through my webbing strap right now um, and once I get to the end I'm actually going to reverse to go through that one time which mainly means there's three stitches through it and I'm going to make sure that my fabric is laying right and sew around the perimeter like this. Now I may have to make adjustments so you can see here it isn't completely right so I'm going to fold it and hold it nice and taut make sure that my webbing is sticking straight up as I get to it. So now make sure that webbing doesn't have any slack in it. Make sure this fold is equal. The more time you spend on this, the better it looks, so don't go too fast. Webbing straight up, sew through it. Now don't forget to do some reversing through it, so I'm going to go back. I want that to be on there really well, and then forward and continue sewing. Okay, we're coming to that, to that transition here, so I just move it out, and I want to try to sew past this seam. Um, and then I'll, I'll flip my whole panel like we did before. That looks good. Now my needle's buried so I can make adjustments without losing my spot. That looks pretty good. I like it. I'm going to sew through this transition. It's a little bit of a bump, no reversing is necessary, and then I'm going to bury my needle, and then I'm going to flip this around so we can sew down this side. So that's the process. Now if you've got any of these little loose things, you know, the, the fibers coming out, just trim them really close to your material. You can do this after you're done sewing, um, but that's the technique. When we get to where we began, we'll do a little bit of reversing, which is in one of the straps. That's why I started in the strap, and hopefully you've got the whole process down now. And here's a look at the finished bag that we've just completed. It is truly gorgeous. Next up, a list of the tools and materials we use to complete this project. 
If you'd like to purchase one of these bag kits or the pattern to make your own, the links are in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or email. We're glad to help.